So it is 102. So I guess <laughs> we will get started today. So we're really excited uh, to have this conference happening today. It's really great that this is a national conference and hopefully everybody's been having a great day so far. So we have a, a small group. So I think what we can do is we're not going to need any breakout rooms. We'll probably just stay together as one. Um, so I'm going to just give everybody an opportunity to introduce yourselves. And the, this is going to be just a nice informal sharing session where we're going to share some of our resources and ideas for teaching social studies. So um, my name is Kara Street. I'm going to be hosting this session today. Um, I am the vice president of MISTA, which is the Manitoba Social Sciences Teachers Association. And we are um, hosting this particular um, session this afternoon. So um, I'm a high school teacher at Miles McDonnell Collegiate in Winnipeg. I'm department head for social studies and I'm mostly teaching IB history, but I'm also teaching um, some other Canadian history and global issues this year. So I'm very excited to get some ideas and share some resources with all of you today. So I'm just gonna go around based on who I have in here and if you could just give your, uh, a quick bio and say who you are and then we'll get going with the sharing. So um, Linda, would you like to go next? Okay, hi, bonjour, good day and uh, bonjour. It's uh, great to be part of this circle and uh, I joined Kara on Treaty One land and the homeland of the Métis Nation in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, I'm the social studies consultant currently, but I uh, uh, taught grade seven to 12 um, and in both geography and history and English language arts. So my passion is always uh, in the classroom. And whenever I work on anything for Manitoba education, I see my classroom full of kids eager to learn in, in front of my mind's eye. So uh, honored to be here to talk about resources for students. Thank you, Linda. Uh, next, we have John Thompson. Uh, John, who's also part of MISA, but he's also going to be representing Canadian Geographic today. Do you want to just do a quick intro to the group? John, are you there? Hello. Can you hear me? We sure can. I'm uh, trying to get the video up, but I can't. It's being hard. Anyways, you can hear me. I'll work on the video. I will bring you some things from Canadian Geographic very, very soon. Once I get okay. that video working. Excellent. Um, yeah, do you want to just tell everybody uh, just a quick introduction? We're just going around in a little circle introducing ourselves. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed that part too. Um, yeah, technology. I'm a high school teacher here in Winnipeg. I've been uh, working in my current high school for close to almost 18 years, 19 years, and 21 years in the game. Uh, I'm also a Manitoba rep for Canadian Geographic, and uh, that's what I'll be bringing towards uh, you very soon, some of their resources. Awesome. And we're also going to get you to be a co-host. Um, I think our tech helpers are going to get that going on here so that you'll be able to share your screen, John. Awesome, thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I see it, you're already there, that's awesome. Okay, um, Angie, are you back on with us? Can you introduce yourself, please? I'm still getting uh, set up on my computer as well as my iPad, um, but yes, I can introduce myself while I'm doing that. Uh, so I'm Angie Coonley, I'm a grade three, four teacher at Highbury School, Louis Real School Division in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm also um, on the MISTA executive and uh, I'm excited to share some resources with everyone today. And we're excited to have some early years resources, so we're trying to bring <laughs> Um, a whole bunch of different things. I know Linda is going to be sharing some education for sustainable development resources. Angie has an early years perspective. John has some uh, geography resources. And then I'm actually going to send you all a list of resources from all different parts of the social sciences curricula. So, um, and hopefully some of our other participants, I see we have Shannon on here. Uh, Shannon, would you be able to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, sorry. Um, and there's actually two of us here. I don't know if you can see us. Oh, you can. Oh, okay. 
Uh, there's two of us here. So I'm Shannon. Um, I am a Canadian World Studies teacher, department head, um, been teaching for about 11, 12 years now. Um, yeah, so teach uh, history and geography. Um, and this is Lindsay. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Same thing as her. Um, we're both Canadian World Studies heads. Um, I've been teaching for 18 years, uh, pretty much every history course you can imagine. I think we both taught. Mm -hmm. um, and we're here in Ontario. Oh, nice. Where in Ontario are you located? Uh, we're in Milton right now, out of the Halton region. Awesome. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And if you have any resources that you want to share, we can also uh, set it up so that you'll have a chance to share your screen. So do you have anything you want to share or are you just here to, to see? We were just kind of here. We didn't know. So I was just kind of <laughs> looking at my computer like, oh, what could I share? But we're just here really to grab some stuff and, and kind of just hear what some other people are doing all over. Yeah, no problem. No, nope, you don't okay. have to share. It's just if you wanted to, we can give you that option. But um, the other thing is, too, I'm going to send out, like I said, a resource list. So if you do have anything that you think of later that you want to um, to send to add to that list, I'll put my email up at the end and you can shoot it my way and I'll uh, I'll um, I'll send it out to the whole group. So OK, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I also see we have another Angie. So we have two Angies on. Um, uh, is the other Angie here? It might just be both me. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Yes, one yeah. is probably your iPad and one is your, uh, your, your laptop. Okay, so I think that's everybody. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna start then with Linda Connor from Manitoba Education. Linda is the resource guru. For those of us in Manitoba, we know that she sends us weekly resources. Usually she has a listserv and she sends it out to all the people on her list. So most uh, social studies teachers in the province are on her list and we just get tons of amazing resources for, from Linda. So Linda, I'll, I'll let you share um, your resource that you have and then talk a little bit about some other things that you're involved with that some people might want to know about. So okay. go ahead, Linda. Great, thanks. So hopefully thumbs up, can you can see the screen on ESD SDGs? Great. Yes. So this is a, a compilation, it's interactive. It's think of it, uh, view it as a visual uh, menu board. And what it does is it allows you to, uh, if you're doing work on ESD or um, sustainable development goals, um, it says, here's where I vetted some documents together. Um, I'm going to highlight a few of them for you. I won't go into all of them, but I do want to talk about this, this one that I'm um, showing, highlighting here, Earth as an Apple. This is an activity I used to do when I was in the classroom to introduce visually what we, we mean by uh, education for sustainable development. So you basically take an apple and the apple represents the earth and then you start cutting it up and you begin to realize how what a fragile um, earth we live on uh, and uh, how little we truly have to live off um, as you cut up the apple. And there's a script for it. And this link is a visual link to take you through the activity. And I've done this with parents as I'm trying to explain our social studies uh, curricula and our vision for social studies to be knowledgeable and active students. And that's what I love about this activity. It show, it gives you some knowledge, but also you're taking action as you go through it. And I think it also, the last line of it really hits at the heart because the last line of it, you hold up this tiny little piece of skin of the apple you've been cutting up and it says, remember this. This is what your life depends on. And it, again, it just shows you that connection with uh, Earth and uh, the reason why we need to be sustainable. The other guides I'm going to talk about are the MCIC, Manitoba Council for International Cooperation Guide. They took all the ESDs and they put them uh, into uh, a summary. Um, and it's a really good guide. Uh, that I recommend uh, lots of uh, learning experiences from it. 
the free rice quizzes are also very good. It's a gamification to understand the world. And when my students would finish an assignment, they were allowed to play this. And, and the idea is while you're playing the game and gaining points, you're also giving rice to areas of the world that are in need of rice. So there, there's that. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to go through all of them. Um, there's a there's another one though, if I can find it fast, I, I, oh, it's the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The, um, there, um, just, I'm gonna see if I can find it real. Um, I think it's the Sustainable Development Goals Resources for Educators. I like this one because there's a comic um, activity. There's book, comic books, graphic novels and, uh, that have been written to support the ESD. So I recommend that. And then there's a child-friendly ESD site, but I don't know whether it's there. And by the way, this could be the direct link to the SDG comic books. It is, by the way. Here's the SDG list. But uh, I think I'm going to stop there. I've created another Padlet for Manitoba educators on social studies, just some of our key pages that we have. And I also uh, sent to Kara a new document we created, which is a compilation of resources if you're teaching black history or anti-racism education. And last but not least, I have a compilation on the Manitoba education site that just got posted on residential schools. And my idea is to take that document and create a Padlet just like this one. But maybe you want to do that. Go to Manitoba education, find the residential school document. It's brand new. Uh, and then you can create a Padlet. They're, they're relatively easy to do. So I think that's it. Thanks. So just to clarify, Linda, thank you so much for sharing this. With this Padlet, then if you want to click on any of these links, it'll then take you to these activities, right? So it's almost yeah. like a one-stop shop for like yeah. a ton of very cool resources. So if you can see, here's the Earth as an Apple activity. And I like it because it gives me the visual because often I remember websites according to the visual. Um, and so, yeah, I don't. So that's what I just did. And then you'd go back to the Padlet and find something else. So, so yeah, when, when I send out the resources, you'll get the link to the Padlet and like the Padlet and uh, the Padlet will have all these links in it. And like Linda said, she actually has another Padlet for some other um Mm -hmm. for Manitoba social like other social studies courses as well so this is the ESD one and then you have one for social studies as well so yeah. you will all get the link to this and I mean these are all great sites I know I've done this Earth Day activity the Apple one the students love the visual of it um and so it, it's a great way to kind of start your geography course mm -hmm. in Manitoba we have grade 10 geography that's a mandatory course and it kind of puts the whole course in perspective for them um so yeah this is great like that Thanks for sharing that. Um, and like I said, when you get the resource package, you'll get the links to that. So thank you very much. Uh, Angie, would you like, are you ready to, to go next with your early years resources? Yeah, I think so. Um, so I can share my screen, right? Let me try this. Uh, I just, while I'm figuring this out, um, that was uh, really neat, Linda. And I think that's awesome. There's so many things that you can just like start right tomorrow right like there's things that we can um take right into our classroom and that's what i love about these kind of pd days is we can just um find things to just take tomorrow and and hopefully a couple of things that i share will be like that um so the first thing is just like a really uh short little activity i just wanted to share that i kind of adapted um so I do an activity in morning meeting a lot of the time called what do you notice and so this is the what do you notice maps edition, you can see my screen right. Yeah, yeah, great. So I actually just took these pictures from um, websites and I'll show you those in a second. But if you take a look at this picture, um, what I would say to my students is I'd say, what do you notice? And um, and they really liked this one, actually. And so they, they say, oh, there's all these scribbles. And um, I noticed that the background maybe looks like it's got some maybe it's a map. Um, it looks like it's got some land, maybe I maybe this is water up there and, and kids will come up and point to things and, and look at things. And I mean, you could do this in, an, in a high school classroom too. Um, but I just find it's a really nice kind of intro activity and, and they really like it. And then afterwards, the next slide I would make would have an explanation of what it is. So in this case, um, 
it's actually a GPS tracking of wolves uh, and they're where they would move around in um, a national park. And so these are our maps that I just found on websites um, uh, like BuzzFeed and Board Panda. So if you were to go to um, BuzzFeed and you just Google type in uh, interesting maps, BuzzFeed or something like that, um, here's an example of one and it's um, oh, the walking, if you can go straight line um, without hitting an ocean. And so I would put this map up uh, in just in a PowerPoint and just say, um, what do you notice about it? And then at the end, I would explain what it actually is. And I just think it's kind of a fun way to kind of get kids interested in maps and um, they're usually pretty interesting um, and totally different than a normal map that you might see. This one here is like uh, all of the places you can go in Lithuania, like uh, just such an interesting kind of uh, map. So I would just take these from the website and put them in a PowerPoint. And so it's such a simple thing that you could do and you do with any map that you find. Um, but I always think these ones are a little bit more interesting and then they lead to other conversations like um, why were the wolves walking all that distance and how were the wolves in different places they never seem to cross paths and uh, in this one that's up right now occupied bald eagles nests why are there suddenly so many more um, and that could lead to so many kind of inquiry questions and and paths that you might go on um, I really enjoy doing inquiry with my students I think it can be really tough to find um, early years inquiry activities um, one of the biggest challenges in early years is that they're learning how to read. So um, a lot of the things that they want to know the answers to, they don't have access to it because they can't read it um, yet. And so there's a lot of um, teacher prep that goes into inquiry in early years. And so I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I do um, in inquiry. So the first thing is I took an inquiry course at U of M a couple of years ago, and uh, we were tasked with finding our own textbook. And I thought that was really kind of uh, stressful, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I found this book and I just absolutely love it. And I come back to it all the time. So it's called um, Make Just One Change. And I can send the title to um, uh Kara and she can send it out as well. So it's um, by Rothstein and Santana. And so basically they are um, educators in the United States and they're working with um, populations that were lower income and um, often EAL families. And the families would come to them and ask questions like, uh, how can I talk to the teacher about my report card, the report card mark? And so they would, they started off by giving them the questions. Oh, you would say, um, why did my, my child get this mark? And the, par the parents kept coming back and asking them, like, can you help me with this? Can you help me with this? Can you help me with this? And um, then they realized that it would be much more important for the parents to learn how to ask the questions as opposed to um, the, like, just giving them more and more questions. It's the teach a man to fish kind of uh, example here. And so uh, this book teaches you how to teach kids how to ask questions. And it's a uh, generally aimed at, at high school and university groups, but uh, I've used it in um, a grade three, four classroom, and I totally think it could be used in any grade. Um, and so they use what's called the question formulation technique. And so uh, this is, you can go to the rightquestion.org website and they have lots of information and lots of activities and things that you can do um, to learn how to use it. And I'm currently really excited. I just signed up for um, the, through Harvard uh, Extended Education, there's a, a course on um, the question formulation technique. And so I'm excited to learn more about it. Um, but just to give you a quick kind of overview of what happens, you as the teacher do not ask any questions. Uh, it's totally up to the kids learning how to ask their own questions. And I mean, working with eight year olds, sometimes the questions are a little confusing <laughs> um, and we don't really know what they're trying to figure out here. But um, basically I would start with giving them sort of a provocation of some kind. Um, so one example that I um, like to use when I'm describing what happened was uh, there was a Facebook post in my area where a beaver had cut down a bunch of trees as beavers do. And um, people in the area were kind of upset that this beaver was cutting down all these trees and they considered moving the beaver to a new location. 
And so I brought this into my class. I took a just screenshot of this post and I asked them what they thought about that. And my students were already super passionate about it. No, we can't move this beaver. He lives there. That's his home. And so it really connected to um, our habitats and communities unit that we were doing uh, in social studies and science. And so um, they really got passionate about this beaver. And so our first few questions as we started the question formulation technique were like, what color is a beaver? And what, what does a beaver's tail look like? And then as they practiced and we went through all the steps, they got to the point where they were asking questions like, if the beaver cuts down all of the trees, will we have oxygen? And I just thought that was like the most thick question that you could ever expect an eight-year-old to come up with. And I just thought that was so neat. So the question formulation technique has four rules. The rules are that you don't stop to discuss. So if a student asks, um, what is what does a beaver's tail look like? We wouldn't have someone say, well, it's flat and it's, you know, this. We would just say, we'd write it down. And the second rule is write it down exactly as asked. So we would write it down if they've got grammar issues, <laughs> we write that exactly how they ask it. Um, ask as many questions as possible and missing one. But anyway, they're simple, easy rules and the kids get really into making sure that we follow the rules. Uh, if I accidentally write down the wrong word in a, in a question, I've got kids saying, no, nope, you have to write it exactly as asked. And, um, and so basically we come up with this huge list of questions and I'll often have this big flip chart paper or bulletin board or whatever full of all these great questions. And then we go through them and we classify if they're thick or thin. We use the rule of if you can answer it in one or two words uh, or with a number uh, or yes or no, then it's probably thin. And we honor the thin questions as well as the thick because both are important. Um, and so sometimes we want to just know quickly, like, what does a beaver's tail look like? Oh, it's like this. But sometimes we need to know, like, this, this question of the oxygen, that's such a big question. That's going to take so much more research. So after we've gone through all the questions, we've um, done thick and thin. We then change at least one question from thick to thin or thin to thick. And that's probably one of the more challenging parts for them. Um, and I was really worried about doing this with my kids, but actually they were great at it. And we would just, they come up with more questions that are related to that question. And then we just check, are any of those thick or thin? Um, and then the next part is really tough. Uh, it's prioritizing the questions. And uh, in the book, Make Just One Change, we talk about um, how, prioritizing isn't something we expect young people to be able to do. It's a skill that you have to learn. And so this is really how the inquiry starts to form as we look at all these questions. And, you know, Johnny might think the beaver's tail is really important, but uh, someone else might think that the oxygen question is important. And how do we decide which one is going to help us do a full inquiry? Um, how far are we going to get with the beaver tail question? And how far might we get with the other? And so once we've prioritized our questions and chosen the, the best question, then we can head off and do some research. So this is where my role really steps up and this is where I would be trying to find research. And sometimes it involves me typing it into easier answers or finding a kid-friendly website. Sometimes I bring in a guest speaker or somebody to speak to them um, or in some way bring it in so that it's more accessible for them. But um, the fact that they can come up with their own questions, uh, I think is a pretty common idea in social studies classrooms, but I know a lot of social studies educators who aren't doing this. And um, so giving them the opportunity to choose what they want to know about, um, it gets them so much more invested in it. And uh, it really, I've noticed in the last couple of years, the questions that my students are asking are just growing and growing uh, each year that I do this because I'm a multi-age class. Um, my fours were usually with me the year before. So uh, they are the experts in the question formulation technique at the beginning of the year and they help the threes and, uh, and we just start having these interesting conversations. So the last thing I just kind of wanted to kind of tie in there is uh, MISTA creates a journal every year or a couple times a year. And our fall issue just came out. Um, and so it's, it's been revamped in the last couple of years. And uh, now it's called MB Speaks. And there's kind of three parts to it. There's uh, pedagogy, uh, practice, and professional development. So we've got a mix of things and all on whatever the theme is for that. Um, time. So uh, this one was on taking kids outside or taking social studies outside. 
And so um, there's different sections here, the pedagogy, the practice, and um, the professional development. So the first couple of articles um, are often very uh, pedagogical. There's research and um, kind of learn more about the why behind the, um, the theme. And then the next section is practice. And so those ones are, um, you know, we're going to be able to take this into our classroom. And so um, I have an article that's in that one there. So I'm just trying to scroll a little bit to get to it um, from this most recent issue. Um, yeah, good article. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get there. I think we're here, yes, okay. So um, I just talked about taking students outside. Um, community is a huge concept in the early years curriculum from kindergarten. I mean, it goes up all the way through, but it's a really common concept in K to four. And um, trying to explain to students what a community is can be challenging, especially for little, little learners. Um, so I said, break it down into explore, uh, engage, I think was my second one, let me see, connect, and then I think engage maybe. I remember it's inspire sorry so uh, I wrote this a while back so here's my pictures of the beaver and the damage that he was doing and that it was causing such controversy and how I brought that into my classroom and then um I also did an inquiry project with my students last year where we were learning about disabilities and inclusion. And so that's actually a picture of my school in the backs of their heads uh, as we were doing a little community walk to explore um, about disabilities and, and accessibility within our own school and community. And so uh, you'll have to read the article to get more information there. But um, that's just an example of a way that you can take your class outside and uh, do inquiry and and see what they observe and that um, you can let them lead the way kind of. Thank you so much, Angie. These, these are some really great resources. And although I know you're coming from an early years perspective, everything you talked about can easily be used at any grade level. Obviously, asking questions, inquiry, taking students outside into the community are all things we do in all levels of social studies. Um, I did want to mention too that the journal is um, something that MISTA puts out. Uh, we've already put a, this is the second one of the year. So we'll, I'll put the link out to both the journals because the journals have some really great stuff in them in terms of resources. Um, there's really interesting articles to read, but we also have a lot of resources in the journal. So uh, when you, if you get a chance to look at the journal, you might find some things that you wanna use in your own classrooms as well. So that will be put on this link page that I'm gonna send out um, after the conference is over. You'll probably get it on Monday because I'll have to compile everything. And I'm not sure how OHASTA is sending it out because they're the one taking all the info, but I will get that sent to all of you. Um, so next, just because in the interest of time here, we only have 15 minutes left, I want to give John Thompson uh, from Canadian Geography to give an, um, speak about some of the resources that they have this year. So John, welcome. You can now share your screen. Hello. Hello. I'm working on bringing out how to share my screen. I think it is there. Can I go to not whiteboard? But just the internet, where's just the internet? Can anyone help me? Uh, show all windows, will that help me? No, that won't help me. I want the internet. Oh, technology is always so Yes, fun. it's fun. I'm used to working on Teams as a platform, not so much on, uh, on the other. Uh, but let's see, I can pull up. Maybe I can get to it this way. Uh, will this one work? How's that? Um, it says your screen is being shared, but we don't see anything yet. Oh, there we go. Yes, okay. it is there. Okay, so this one is put together by uh, our, our, our manager of education program, Sarah Black in, uh, in Ottawa. And uh, Canadian Geographic Education has gone through a great revamp of their, their website. So it looks fantastic. Uh, for all the other previous years I've been presenting, it's been this archaic jumble of uh, information of trying to get from one place to the other and now it's all kind of neatly organized into one place so with uh, with Cangio, uh they have uh, again this great website which hopefully i can click here and maybe it'll pull it up 
because again, we're trying to find that internet. Uh, it is free to join. If you have not become a member, it is free. And with that, monthly newsletters will show up into your inbox uh, with all kinds of different resources being highlighted per month. There's free resources, which is in teacher world, great. Although there's plentiful of resources, it's hard to maybe narrow them down. So in that newsletter, they'll try to highlight maybe two or three that are really stand out or what, uh, what might be of interest that month, what it might tie into, if there's a certain month going on um, of uh, a certain holiday or a certain uh, national day, they will definitely try to link to that. Our, <clears throat> pardon me, our professional opportunity, uh, development opportunities, this summer, they actually ran a, uh, a one-day conference, which was awesome. They had probably over a couple hundred participants from across the, the country watching uh, and a number of uh, presenters, and it, it ran very, very smooth. And let's see if this website will open for us. Will it, will it play nice? What if my screen's wide open? Will this open? Do you see my internet now? Is that working? You see internet? No, we're just seeing the PowerPoint still. Shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, so let me work with the PowerPoint that I was given then. Uh, we will try that. Uh, so the topic this morning, you, you listened to Nigan talk, with, what a wonderful uh, talk he gave today with lots of information. Uh, Kanji the Graphic also has information on indigenous history, indigenous geography, and they have uh, an atlas, uh, a compiled atlas set, if you're not familiar with it. Mine is right here, right here. It's almost like story time here. It's a, a great four edition set, uh, which you, most libraries might have already, your school library might have one already as well. And it's written by indigenous peoples which is always a welcome find for, for resources, as uh, was mentioned also in the, the treaty workshop this morning too, right? Sometimes it's hard finding indigenous produced uh, materials. And so, so this is one, even though that it's put out by a Canadian Geographic, there are uh, indigenous writers to it. And what you can also get on their, their, their site is a, uh, access to a tile map which means a, a tile, much like a floor tile, they are printed on eight and a half by uh, 11 sheets of paper. And what you can do with that is print that out and give them to each of your students. And you can do some map reading with students. What part of the map do you have? What is, uh, what is being shown on your, uh, your square, so to speak? And you can maybe learn about some latitude, some longitude. Uh, perhaps someone has the compass rose, uh, someone has the legend, and you can do some learning and then kind of that jigsaw puzzle. And maybe you can put it together either on the floor, it's probably the best to put it on the floor or push a number of tabletops together. Or if you have a very large bulletin board, maybe you can start pinning them uh, and moving them around that way. I would recommend the floor only because if you're pinning them, then you got to unpin them and it becomes a little more cumbersome, uh, but then you start putting things together, and uh, it's 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 impressive, right? For for as much as students have a piece of paper in front of them, and when we took you know have the traditional piece of paper map, all of it being on eight and a half by eleven, and when you just have one giant section of it, they really start to to look at that section. Well, what do I have here? What way do I turn this? Which what does it show me? And there are so many great questions you can use as uh, spatial significance questions there that you can uh, have some discussion about and then you can put it together. Uh, another thing you can do is you're a member, you can order a gigantic floor map. Uh, some of us might not <clears throat> have the space to do that. You might need uh, a small gym, which the gym teacher might not uh, necessarily like. But uh, nonetheless, uh, these maps are quite large. They would take uh, about a half a gym. And you can literally walk across Canada on them. Uh, Kangeo has more than just the, uh, the Indigenous Peoples Atlas map. It has uh, an energy map, which I've used here before. They also have a Vimy map, if you're a history, uh, history person. And they have a circumpolar map. They have probably about 10 or 12. They're, they don't always travel uh, throughout the year, depending on if there's a budget for it, if there's a need for it, but you can always contact them. Uh, for the most part, they travel free. Sometimes there's a bit of a cost uh, associated with it as well. 
With their site too, there are a number of lesson plans that are ready to go. Uh, they have one on water that's just come out. They also have some interactive maps. The Gain Residential School map is here, as you can see. Uh, again, if we're online, I'd show you it, but uh, you can mouse over and click. It'll show you a map of all the, the residential schools that were across Canada. And as you click on them, it'll tell you a little bit of information about each one of them, right? Um, in terms of other pieces with CanGeo, uh, just to highlight, we, we talked um, about the newsletter, we talked about maps, the tile maps, the large floor maps, the workshops. Another thing they like to do is feature teachers across Canada. Each month they will find someone to feature in their, uh, not magazine, but in their, uh, their uh, newsletter. And these are all listed on the website and uh, they are quite motivational. Sometimes we we kind of uh, get through the, the months of October, November, December, and uh, we let ourselves kind of, you know, get boggled down a little bit. And sometimes you need a little bit motivational uh, help there. And when you look at some of the teachers and what they're doing, and you can probably do that in your own building too, right? Uh, you'd be amazed and go, oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty neat. Like just listening to to Angie talk here, it's like, right, let's go, let's go look at uh, the woods here, see what the beavers are up to. And that uh, reminds me of uh, the lake this summer as we uh, we came across a beaver dam and my daughter was really into looking for, uh, for sticks or twigs or trees that were chewed by beavers and having that conversation all about uh, beavers as well. So uh, in terms of CanGeo, wonderful website, great, uh, easy to use, a uh, number of resources. They have another uh, one on energy and energy guide, which is great. Uh, they have weekly workshops. They're on all social media. So if you get on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you'll find a number of resources being highlighted there. Just in the uh, other passing, and I know the time's going quick, we said 145. Uh, other things that I like to use in my classroom, Rick Mercer, great. Uh, he's retired. So all the episodes you can find are on YouTube. Uh, they're a little bit older because the show has stopped, but uh, the information is still pretty good. You'll find also that some of the, the, the politicians are no longer in those roles. And that's a great way to have a conversation to your students about uh, sources. Are they still valid? Right? How do you know? How do you know that this is an older clip? There's one I showed on the Gold Eyes the other day. Rick joins the Gold Eyes for, uh, for a day. And you say, okay, how old is this? I don't know any of the players. Well, that's okay. What do you know about geography? Well, a little bit. All right. In uh, as you're looking at from home plate over to uh, right field in the foul ball territory line, what's not there? Oh, the Museum for Human Rights. Right. It's not there. So now you have a bit of a predate uh, as to when this was made. And so you can always, great to travel across Canada. Some of our kids don't get a chance to travel very much, especially with COVID, it's a little bit harder, but uh, using Rick, Rick's great for doing that. Other things I like to use are news clips in, in the class from uh, the national or the CBC or your local. I try to give the kids uh, three guiding questions of the students. What's making news? Does it matter? And what should be your reaction, right? Uh, should we care? Should we not care? Why or why not? Other things I like to use too are political cartoons. We, I, I steal from the free press every day and put that up. So that gives us some conversation about uh, daily events, what's going on, as well as perspective, because uh, all those cartoonists have a perspective. What can you find? Uh, how do they show their, their slant or their, their viewpoint? So kids seem to be good about doing that and, and reading into those. Photographs are always great too for history, geography, change over time, continuity and change. Those are awesome ways to use photographs. Uh, and another website, if you haven't used it before, is GeoGuessr. One of our uh, newer teachers here has brought that into his class and he uses it every day. Kids are eating that up and it shows you a kind of a picture across uh, anywhere in, you can pick North America or the world for that matter. And then the kids have a chance to guess where in the world it might be. The clues are very, I don't know, they're not, they're not super helpful when I play it with my kids, but uh, like, well, where is that? It's a bunch of trees and some water. It's anywhere in Ontario, and then it turns out to be BC, right? And it's like, whoa, okay, so kind of fun. Anyways, I, I see uh, I've used some time, there's about five minutes left, so I will uh, digress there. I apologize that I couldn't figure out how to use the internet and uh, Zoom at the same time, so. Sorry about that. Thank you, John. Uh, those are some great ideas. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I really like the one about the daily political cartoon one. Um, I know we have some world studies teachers on here, and I teach global issues, so it's a great way just to kind of keep 
on top of what's going on daily in the news and then bringing that conversation into the classroom. And we will share again, the, I'll put that website, um, the geographic website on our resource page as well as um, the GeoGuessr one that you shared. So thank you for that. Um, we only have four minutes left. I did want to briefly talk about the um, Canadian Museum for Human Rights. I know you mentioned it in your presentation and they have some amazing educational websites on there. Just in the interest of time, I was going to pull it up and show you the 180 project that they're doing right now, but we're, we only have a couple of minutes. So I will include that on our resource list, but they're doing um, a project right now. They've got a full teacher's guide, resource guide for this. And essentially it's an opportunity for students from all across Canada to do a take action project where they come up with an issue in human rights that they want to address. They do inquiry into it and then they come up with something that they want to do to change that issue. Um, and then there's some grant money available from the Human Rights Museum if your students are going to make this project a reality. And there's even going to be a showcase of these projects. So even if you're not here in Winnipeg, there will be a chance to be able to participate in that virtually. So this is an amazing guide. Um, Graham Lowe's the education director at the Human Rights Museum. He's been working with a team of teachers to put this together and I've been part of that group. So I will share that with you and it's great for um, middle years through to senior years. It's a, it's a really uh, user-friendly guide that you can use in your classroom. So I will share that as well on our list. Now I noticed um, as the presentation went on, we also have some a new person in the room. So Adila, I see that you're here. Um, I don't know if you'd like to just quickly introduce yourself and is there anything you wanna share um, as this is a sharing circle session? Hi. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of sharing circle, um, this is uh, my 26th year. I am currently teaching, uh, I find myself teaching social studies for the first time uh, in a classroom versus homeschooling. Um, so this is just a new process for me and uh, I'm just hoping to get lots of resources and I'm as as you guys are presenting and I'm writing down all sorts of stuff and sites that I need to now research so thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. I know, I know Adila, and normally Adila is a math teacher. So this is awesome that you're uh, into the social sciences now. We welcome you into our community. So um, you don't need to worry about writing everything down frantically. I'm going, I don't know if, if you were there at the beginning of the session, but I'm going to compile all of these resources as well as some other ones, and I'll send out a link to all of them. So I do want to mention that because we only have two minutes left, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put my email address in the chat. And then if you could all email me because I know the conference is going to compile everything. But because we're such a small group, um, I'm going to uh, ask that you email me. And then I will then reply to all of you with the list of all the resources. So here is my email. I'm going to put it in right now. So on Monday, I will compile everything and I'll just send it all out and it'll be just links to all of these sites, plus a bunch of other ones that we obviously didn't get a chance to look at today. And then you will have access to all of those links and it'll just be in a one stop shop, one little document that you can just click on and uh, and find the things that you are interested in. Um, so here is my email. And then uh, I will send them all out. I know the conference, like I said, they are going to be sharing other resources with you as well. But because we're a small group here, I will be able to do it that way. Did everybody uh, get a chance to see my email in there? Did it show up? It should be in the chat. Okay, great. So that brings us right to 145. So I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. And I'd really like to thank um, Angie, John and Linda for doing such a great job in sharing some of the resources that you um, have put together. That's been awesome. And like I said, the other participants, um, we have uh, our friends from Ontario joining us. If there's anything too that you'd like to add, um, please send email them to me and I'll put all that together on Monday. So expect an email next week with all of those resources. Um, and yeah, it was really great to meet all of you and work with you today. And 
just if you're following the agenda, there is a break and then there's a session with Carla Peck on historical thinking and then the final um, session that you signed up for for the day. So enjoy the rest of the conference and I hope to see you all again in person soon. And it was nice to meet our guests from out of town. So have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thanks, Kara. And oh, I just want to thank our tech hosts that were on the site with us. Thank you so much. Luckily, Thanks. we were, other than oh, John, so we, <laughs> we were pretty good with our technology. We didn't for see sure. that. So thank you for, for being there with us as well. Oh, you're so welcome. Have a great day. Thanks. Yeah, you do. Take care, everyone. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.